In this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a spin blur transition, so stay tuned. I'm just a normal person with no video editing background who wanted to start making YouTube videos and maybe cool transitions and effects. I don't really plan on being a professional video editor, so I was looking for a free, easy to learn video editing software. Luckily, I stumbled on Shotcut, a free open source video editing program that can do many of the tricks you can do on more enterprise video editors like Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, but with a much simpler and leaner interface, thus dramatically shortening the learning curve. It just takes using your imagination. So let's learn together. Welcome back to the channel. This particular tutorial was actually a subscriber request and for anyone who subscribes to my channel I'm always down to help you out so I will gladly show you how to do what is called the spin blur transition and so here we are with Shotcut um, again before I begin I always want to show you which version I have and in this particular tutorial I'm using version 20.07.11 so I'm starting out with a couple of royalty-free videos here that I've downloaded. Um, this is the first one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spin blur transition this one to this second one here. So let me drag the videos into the timeline. So that's the first one. And just to make organization a little easier, I'm gonna separate them into two different tracks. I'm gonna add another video track and I'm gonna put this track two on the second one here. And for this tutorial, we don't really need that much. And so I'm actually gonna shorten this first clip down to about 10 seconds here. And so I'm gonna click this split icon again and then choose the area I'm going to delete delete that I'm then going to drag this second image or second video and butt it right against the end of the first one and so let me just make it a little bigger for you and so this is where it ends and that's actually a pretty decent transition already but that's that's just me cutting them and so what I want to do is I want to spin blur this end part and begin the second part also with a spin blur. So here's how I would do it. So let me select the first video clip. I'm then going to count back by six. Let me zoom in there. And then I'm going to isolate that transition point by splitting it. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to the beginning of the second clip, count to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Split that as well. So that now all I need to do is focus on that one and that one. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit so that you can see what I'm working with here. So let's start with the first one. So there are two movements that we want to focus on. The first one is the spinning movement. The second one is for it to blur when it gets to the end of the clip. And so with that particular clip selected, we're going to go to filters and we're going to choose rotate and scale. And what we want to do is we want to start out with a rotation of zero degrees and end up by the end of the clip rotating it all the way to 180 degrees. And so all we have to do is go over to the rotation part, uh, click the keyframe icon. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Keep that first keyframe at zero. Let's then fast forward to the very end and let's set the keyframe to 180 degrees. And so this is what it looks like. So 
So you notice now that once, once it starts rotating, there are some blank areas that doesn't look good. And so it's going to mess up our, our transition here. And so what we would, we would need to do is while it's rotating, we also want to make it zoom to the very end to eliminate all these black areas, these ugly black areas here. We don't want that. It's going to ruin the, uh, the look of the transition. And so thankfully, we've already chosen the rotate and scale. And within the same filter, we can also apply the zoom effect using the scale side of it right now to make sure we eliminate these, these gaps that we see here. And so I'm going to go to the first frame. That's OK. There aren't any gaps. Um, I'm going to go to the second, the second frame here. And we notice these gaps here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the keyframe icon. Now on the scale section, click that and make sure it starts out at 100% go to the second frame, we might have to keyframe every frame of this transition, but thankfully there's only six frames, so it's not that big of a deal. So this is the second frame, and obviously we want to magnify this a little bit to fill in the gaps. And so I'm going to start out with 150%, um, almost there, let's go 160, still not there, uh, 170, Almost there. I mean, if you're really picky, you see these two little dark areas there. Um, I think 175 might get it. Okay, so there's, I'm a little picky, so there's a little section right there. So while that's selected, I'm just going to raise it up by 175.7 is the is the, the resulting magnification on this one. And so now we're going to move it to the third frame. And as it continues to rotate, once again, we're seeing these gaps here. And so we're going to need to add another keyframe here. And so I'm going to guess maybe 190. Nope. 200. OK, maybe 210 is the way to go. 210, OK. So the next keyframe is at 210. And then we move it to the third keyframe. That looks OK. Next keyframe, that looks OK. That looks OK. And then we start on the second clip. And so right now, this is what it looks like. So now what we want to do is we want to add a blur to this so that it gives you the perception of a motion blur as it's spinning. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the beginning of that transition clip again. I'm going to go to the filter section again, click the plus symbol, and then choose blur. And in this instance, I prefer using the Gaussian blur. So I'm going to choose Gaussian blur. While the cursor is still at the beginning of the clip, I'm going to click the keyframe icon again. I'm going to default to zero and then go to the very end of the clip. And I want it to have a Gaussian blur of 50. And so let's see what happens. Let's zoom in that area here. So along with the rotation, we're also getting blur. Um, I actually want to blur it a little earlier. So maybe instead of choosing the, the sixth frame, I'm going to choose the fifth frame. And I'm going to go back 
and set that to 60. Let's see what happens there. Okay. So that should be okay. So that's the first part of the zoom transition or the rotation transition, my bad. Before we continue, if you can do me a huge, huge favor and subscribe to my channel right now. Your subscription will go a long way to help me reach that 1,000 subscriber mark. Hitting the 1,000 subscriber mark is a huge milestone for my channel. This will go a long way to help me make more videos to help my fellow Shotcut users. So please, if you can subscribe, that'll help me a lot. Thank you. Okay. The first part of the transition is now done. And just to take inventory of what we did. So we're spinning this image 180 degrees. And while it's spinning, we're also magnifying it to fill in the gaps. Finally, as it's spinning and magnifying, we're also blurring it so that the resulting blur setting is 60 by the time we get to the end. And so with that being said, what we need to do in the second half of this transition is we need to do the polar opposite of what we did in this, in this, in this first half of the transition, just to make it look like it's part of that one continuous motion. So let's work on the easy part first. So while the second half of the transition is selected or that clip, we then go to the filter section, click plus, and once again, we're gonna, take, we're gonna choose rotate and scale. While in the first clip, we began with a zero degree rotation ending up in 180. In the second clip, we're going to begin with 180. And instead of ending at the very end of the clip at zero, we're actually going to end at 360 degrees. Otherwise, if we click zero, it's going to rotate counterclockwise. So the first half of the transition is going to rotate clockwise and then it's going to go backwards counterclockwise. So instead of 180 to zero, we're actually going to go 180 to 360. So while we have this at 180, let's click the keyframe icon. And so the first keyframe here is set at 180. We're then going to go to the very end of the clip. We're going to add another keyframe by just making an adjustment here and setting that to 360. And that should complete the full circle, just like that. So I'm gonna go once again to the very first half of the transition only because I forgot what the settings were. And if you notice here under the scale, the setting is set at 210%. So what I'm gonna do at the beginning of this clip is actually set this at 210%. Click the keyframe icon and then go to the end of the clip and set this back to 100%. And so while the first half of the transition we're actually zooming in or we're actually magnifying the second half of the transition, we're actually shrinking. So let's see what that looks like. Let's run the full transition. And just like the first half of the transition with the little black gaps on the side, we're also 
having that same problem with, with the second half. And so we're also going to have to fill in the gap by setting magnifications for some of the areas before it turns into, uh, before it reverts back to 0% or 100% scale. So at the very end, I think we're okay. So here, let's start with this point right here. And again, let's go to the keyframe section. We're gonna add another keyframe. We're gonna need to magnify this a little bit. Um, let's say 170, close, probably 175. Got it. And then we're gonna go one frame before that. We need to magnify that to, let's say, 200, right there. Add a little bit more just to fill in the little gaps. Okay, and it ended up being 204.2. We're good to go. One frame before that, that's fine. The frame before that is fine. That one, and that one. Okay, so we're good to go. Let's go back to the timeline and now let's see what the transition looks like. Almost there. The only thing we're missing, even though this particular clip actually already has a blur at the beginning, just for all intents and purposes, to complete the technique, we're gonna add that same blur that we added in this first part of the transition. So once again, we chose Gaussian blur and we went from, let's see what the settings are. We went from zero all the way to 60. Actually, it looks like it dropped by the time we got to the end. So we're gonna set this last keyframe to 60 as well. And then we're gonna go over here. Once again, we're gonna add another filter and that's going to be blur, Gaussian blur. And we're gonna set this to 60 because now we're gonna go from blurry to clear. Click the keyframe icon go to the very end, set this one to zero. And now here is the complete spin blur transition. Start a little earlier here. And there you go. So there you go. That's the spin blur transition. If you can do me a huge, huge favor and subscribe to my channel. If you didn't know, I'm trying to reach the 1000 subscriber mark and your subscription will help me. It'll go a long way for me to be able to make more of these types of tutorials. Aside from that, if you have any other suggestions on the type of tutorials you'd like to see, or if you have any comments about this particular tutorial, please let me know on the comments section of this video. Don't forget to like, make a comment, and subscribe to this channel. I appreciate your subscription. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.